channel. My name is Anayati and today I'm going to talk about some preliminary diagnoses that you as an owner can make and don't waste your time based on wrong conception and decisions when there's a fault with that system. But please note that these diagnoses are just preliminary and never try to fix any component, line or electrical circuit based on that because these actions can result in your property or body damage. And the only purpose is that you have a right conception to have a right approach when you encounter a problem. And also note that when I talk about each problem and fault, I talk about that in general. So your car's system can be manual, semi-automatic or fully automatic type. So you need to approach to each system based on system operation and principles that I have explained for that. One of the major problems with AC systems is no or insufficient cooling. This problem can be caused by many issues. It can be a blockage for refrigerant flow, the damper for heat exchanger is a stock open, not sufficient refrigerant in the system, the condenser fan is not functioning or dirt is accumulated on the radiator, oil heat exchanger or the condenser, the compressor is not engaging or is faulty, that can have many reasons like AC fuse is blown, AC switch on AC panel is faulty, evaporator temperature sensing is in trouble, refrigerant pressure sensing is faulty or overpressure lines are sensed, AC ECU is culprit, magnetic clutch needs to be changed, wiring harness and electrical circuit is not sound and even drive belt can be missed. Next problem with AC systems is periodic cooling. This problem can be caused by excessive moisture in the system that ends up in forming ice in the expansion valve and its blockage and periodic melting and forming the ice again causes periodic cooling. And because the evaporator is cold, condensation of moisture on that forms water droplets that need to be drained. So there is a drain hose under the evaporator chamber that if it gets clogged causes excessive frosting on the evaporator that long periodic melting and forming the frosts again on the evaporator causes periodic low and high airflow rate of the blower. And also another problem with AC systems is output of the system has unpleasant odors. This problem can be caused by funguses and bacteria that are living on the evaporator or your car's cabin filter needs to be changed. And also semi-automatic and fully automatic air conditioning systems have the possibility of recording travel codes. So if you saw that AC light on your car's panel is flashing, you need to visit the service shop to read the codes and do the related repairs. Now, even though you are not supposed to do any repairs or services on your car's AC system, but here I want to give you some technical tips that can help you to have a fairly good idea that what technicians usually do to service and repair your car's AC system. First thing that a technician should do when you visit them for a fault is verifying that fault. Then they usually do a visual inspection to find any obvious fault like a misdrive belt, non-functioning compressor, balloon fuses, touching pipes and components to have a sense of the condition of the whole system as blockage in the system causes a hot line before that and a cool line after that. And also they look for any sign of leakage on the connections and fittings and seals of the compressor input shaft that the pulley is installed on that. Now regarding signs of the leakage, I think you need to know a very important technical issue and it is the oil that is working inside the whole system. An AC compressor like any other functioning component needs lubrication and this lubrication is partly done by the refrigerant that is working inside the whole system but surely the compressor sees it without some amount of oil in that. AC systems working with R134A refrigerant use polyalkylene glycol or PAG oil that is a synthetic lubricant that is very hygroscopic and it means that it absorbs the moisture easily and if this situation happens it loses its desired properties. Because these oils get easily mixed with refrigerant, they flow into the whole system and lubricate o-rings and seals and keep them pliable and effective for preventing leakage. About 50% of all the oil in the system is contained in the compressor, but also other components have their share too. But during visual inspection, a visible oil leak is a sign of refrigerant leakage. 
Now back to that diagnostic procedure. Usually technicians take their next steps based on these visual inspections. For example, if they diagnose that the compressor is not functioning, they start to check the electrical circuit and its components like you know, relays, wiring harnesses and verifying for a good ground for compressor and also they can use pressure gauge to read the pressure of the high and low pressure lines and based on that make reasoning. Also using diagnostic tools and reading codes and activating and deactivating components can help them to pinpoint the culprit. Now if technicians diagnose that leakage is the cause of the problem they can find that leaking point different ways like using simple soap and water solution, heat detecting microphones or using electronic leak detectors that can find presence of refrigerant in the sampled air and then they recover the remaining refrigerant from the system and fix the leakage or change components and at the end and before they recharge the system with refrigerant they use a manual or automatic recharge machine and after verifying for the fix they apply a vacuum to the system for about 20 to 30 minutes and then they recharge the system with refrigerant according to the specifications that are marked on the related under the hood label. I hope that this video was useful and informative for you and worth the precious time that you spent for watching that. Please subscribe to my channel if you like and press the bell icon to be notified if I have a new video on my channel. Bye.